Hello. Hello and welcome to this uh, special edition of the CNCF webinar series. We're going to talk about service meshes today and specifically uh, how to manage them with confidence. We're going to talk about the service mesh management plane called Meshery. Uh, Meshery has just entered into the CNCF. It has actually been accompanied by um, a sibling project called Service Mesh Performance. And so these two are, well, um, certainly part of the latest batch of projects to enter into the CNCF and probably, you know, arguably uh, the hottest batch to enter in. So, so we're going to talk about some hot projects today. Uh, my name is Lee Calcoat, and I'm joined by my esteemed colleague. Hey, I'm Navindu. Uh, I'm an engineer at Layer 5. I'm also one of the maintainers of the Meshery project. Uh, Navendu and I spend a lot of time focused on service meshing. And uh, Meshery is the sort of the largest open source project that we spend time on. So in the service mesh community um, at, at Layer 5, there's a lot of cloud native application networking that goes on. There are a few projects that satellite meshery. And so we'll, we'll touch on a couple of these uh, projects today that they, they are important to meshery. They are extensions. Some of them are extensions to meshery. Some of them stand alone. Um, but, but we're going to get into this um, fairly heavily. There's a number of um, CNCF logos that you're seeing on the screen. So some of these projects are now, now are donated to the CNCF. And some of these are initiatives that are hosted within the CNCF Service Mesh Working Group. We'll talk a little bit more about that group and how you can get involved um, in not only that working group, but also in Meshery um, here toward, toward the end of the session. So uh, with that, I, you know, we'll also say like the, the community that these projects are built within is um, alive and kicking. Uh, Meshery itself has a little over 300 contributors. Um, about 15 maintainers, um, like Navendu was saying, um, um, he, he is he is one of those. There's a we're, we're you know fortunate to have um, uh, well a diverse community and one that's um, you know includes some well some names that you might recognize. A couple of maintainers from Red Hat, uh, Rackspace, Intel, oh, HashiCorp. Uh, and uh, a variety of, of places. So the, there's Meshery's, uh, the, the project itself has a, you know, uh, a large vision. Um, we'll, we'll talk all about that. Meshery also participates um, and has for a couple of years now in the LFX, well, I guess before it was called LFX, the uh, Community Bridge, but the LFX Mentorship Program, it's actually ranked uh, the number one um, mentorship project. So. So that's certainly a point of pride for some of the mesh mates in the layer five community. Um, we're coming up on about a thousand um, users, a uh, thousand folks um, that have um, dug their teeth into meshery. So that's um, helpful as well. You'll notice one of the things that um, down here is this statistic about performance tests. Meshery was, um, has a number of feature areas, a number of aspects of a service mesh that are managed. And one of those um, initial areas was focused on performance and um, the, it built out of the desire to analyze the performance of a mesh, some of the characteristics around uh, running service meshes efficiently. And so there's a number of anonymous um, performance tests results that are collected as, as uh, users send those in. And they are, um, to be, they are um, to be presented for analysis as part of the, the CNCF um, service mesh working group that, that we were talking about before. So uh, as we will unfold, like what is a management plane? Um, it probably would serve us well for a moment to just talk about network planes in this regard. And so uh, if, you know, to, to characterize a service mesh um, at a high level, um, architecturally, there's generally two planes that um, a service mesh is comprised of. One of those is the data plane, the other one is the control plane. If you're a network engineer uh, or a dyed in the wool network engineer, these terms are probably really familiar to you as well as like the term management plane. If you're not, um, but you spent some time around Kubernetes and other systems um, in the cloud native ecosystem, 
Um, these terms probably aren't too far removed, or you probably have some familiarity with what they do, what they're responsible for. In the land of service meshes, the data plane is really, um, it's, it's really the collection of intelligent proxies um, that you know, work in unison and work under the control of the, well, I just used the term to describe the term, I work under the control, command and control of the control plane. Control plane, um, um, to speak generically, to what a control plane does for a service mesh is really like configuration management of these intelligent proxies. So the proxies are something of the workhorse. They're lifting um, the packets and inspecting them, sending them, sending the packets along their way, um, rejecting them, denying them, injecting chaos, doing you know, securing them, doing lots of things to uh, requests to to packets that flow. It's a lot of um, control that a service mesh brings to. Uh, well, to you, the user, a lot of insight, um, telemetry, security, you know, observability within there, a lot of power in the network. Um, nice thing about a service mesh is it's sort of something of a, a next-gen SDN, um, which becomes really important when you're running distributed systems. Um, the network is fallible, unfortunately. It's mostly DNS, but the network, um, the other aspects of the network um, are fallible as well. So a management plane, uh, well, can do any number of things, um, but, but essentially help you um, integrate service meshes into your backend systems, uh, take full advantage of some of the power of the network, perhaps um, help federate uh, various service meshes, uh, maybe help you implement chaos, implement and perform chaos engineering well, or um, advanced tra uh, traffic canarying, uh, advanced canarying of your applications, um, deeper insights into the performance of your applications and to the performance of your um, infrastructure, maybe to uh, bring about um, change management or workflow to, to things that, that transpire in a mesh. Like there's, there's a long list of things that are possible to do. And, and part of those possibilities are brought about by, uh, well, intelligent filters that can be loaded into each proxy that's running in a mesh. We'll, we'll talk about, well, we'll talk about WebAssembly a little bit and, uh, and we'll talk about some of the, the proxies that support WebAssembly and, and some that don't, but are still extendable, still have a plugin model in which you can dynamically insert um, different traffic filters to, well, to do a number of things. So this is the wheelhouse of Meshery. These are the things that um, Meshery as the service mesh management plane, um, this is its area of focus. To articulate that a little bit differently, um, Meshery, um, well, it performs a number of things around lifecycle management of, um, well, of 10 different service meshes actually. So there's been a lot of time invested in building out uh, adapters, service mesh adapters. So Meshery um, supports the logos that you see below um, and has um, one adapter uh, for each of these service meshes. There's a couple more that are on the roadmap. Uh, and so we'll, we'll see how long it takes to get those out. But it, so suffice to say, Meshery does lifecycle management of those service meshes. It also does workload management or application management. So it helps you onboard and offboard your applications onto the mesh. Um, does performance management um, fairly deeply today. And actually just to give everyone a, a sense of where Meshery is at in terms of its uh, roadmap and um, its Meshery's current release is in the V0.5 range. So, you know, if the proverbial, you know, if, if the 1.0 is sort of the proverbial mark by which uh, its architecture complete, then Meshery is about halfway there. So it's um, not, a, not a small project. Meshery also does configuration management of service meshes themselves um, and um, hopefully, in, well, encourages you or enables you to be operate your mesh with confidence. Uh, Meshery also has a, a, an emerging concept um, being built into it uh, right now, and that's around service mesh patterns. So there are best, some best practices that Meshery has built into it to help analyze your runtime environment of your mesh and inform you of whether or not you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong. But it also has the concept of, of a pattern and we'll, we'll get into those. 
Mastery manages um, WebAssembly filters as well. And so, so um, well, I guess we, we should say briefly that just kind of to the note that's here that um, there are a couple of service mesh, well, specifications, um, perhaps you know, maybe one or two or three of which, um, there's, there's really three, we'll talk about two, um, maybe two of which that you're familiar with. So SMI, service mesh interface, Meshery has been, um, was an initial um, launch partner with SMI and continues to be very much involved in SMI. We'll talk about some of its involvement. Meshery also implements service mesh performance. That's a, a second specification. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, with that, this might be a good time to, uh, well, Navendu to, to let people poke around Meshery a bit. Yes, uh, thanks Lee. Uh, so what you can see is the Meshery dashboard. So we have went ahead and deployed a couple of service meshes already. So as we mentioned, Meshery helps manage helps manage the life cycle of service meshes. So you get provision, the provision uh, service meshes, applications, and all those other stuff uh, onto your uh, cluster. Uh, and the uh, Meshery also uh, connects to your Kubernetes cluster automatically. And it also discovers uh, services that are already running inside your cluster, even if you deploy it without Meshery. And uh, we also have adapters uh, specific to each service mesh. So each service mesh has its own set of features. Some service mesh may have less features and some uh, even more and, uh, advanced features. So Meshery, to leverage uh, the maximum functionality from each service mesh, Meshery has separate adapters for each of the service mesh. And uh, Meshery also lets you integrate uh, with your Prometheus and Grafana uh, add-ons. So you can uh, import your existing uh, Grafana dashboards to Meshery and your CTR as well. So uh, so when you first start Meshery, we also have a configuration wizard, which basically walks you through the entire setup to uh, get Meshery up and running. So or by the end of this, you it, it will make sure that you have a working machinery running on your uh, cluster. And if you want uh, a, a more uh, finer uh, configuration, like you can uh, configure your environment through settings and uh, you can configure service meshes, you can configure your metrics that is Prometheus and Grafana. And, uh, uh, some users also use uh, Meshery's performance testing cap capability very extensively. So you can define your performance test to be used, uh, to be run repeatedly, uh, to be reused. So, and uh, uh, we'll look at some of these stuff uh, uh, in, in a couple of minutes, uh, but uh, as uh, Meshery has all these functionalities, uh, Yep. Uh, back to you, Lee. Let's. Uh... Nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. So speaking of Meshery's functionalities, it's um, Meshery as a project um, takes to heart this the concept of being extensible. So Meshery is something of uh, an extensible platform. So this is this slide is a an exploded view of some of the internals of Meshery and and. Uh, how it works, some of the components um, in, inside of it. Uh, it highlights the notion that there are any number of extension points, um, areas where um, new adapters can be added, um, additional load generators can be um, supported. Meshery supports three types of load generators today, uh, or where uh, out of the box uh, patterns that we'll talk about in a little bit can be additional patterns can be added, um, additional best practices can be um, ingested, new WebAssembly filters can be added. And so um, in this way, yeah, Meshery, Meshery is something of a, an extensible platform. Uh, there's a couple of deployment models that are uh, that Meshery supports. So to put it concisely, Meshery deploys as a set of containers you can choose to deploy those containers um, in your Kubernetes cluster 
or outside of your Kubernetes cluster on a Docker host. Uh, we find that some users, uh, well, they, they make a decision one way or the next in part based on uh, what, how intensely they're using Meshery to um, analyze the performance of their clusters, the performance of their meshes. Sometimes they desire for that load to be generated um, off cluster or in cluster, maybe in a separate cluster. And so Meshery affords that choice for users. Um, each Kubernetes cluster um, is the recipient then of uh, the Meshery operator. Inside of the Meshery operator is um, a custom controller called MeshSync. MeshSync helps um, keep Meshery apprised of the various changes that are going on to the service meshes and various changes that are happening within um, Kubernetes itself. Um, in this way, Meshery supports not only um, greenfield deployments, like so deploying um, service meshes itself, but it also supports connecting to existing service mesh deployments, so brownfield deployments, so it will discover your um, existing deployments as well. Uh, there's a, an extensible concept in Meshery called a provider, and so providers can you know, typically offer um, a layer of persistence. So to the extent that, you're, that the user that users are running um, performance tests intensely, or to the extent that users want to have a particular type of directory integration, so they want to bring their own identity um, to Meshery and have a multi-user um, experience, uh, that's an area of extensibility. Um, the other area of extensibility is um, the notion that Meshery has a couple of APIs, um, both a REST API and a GraphQL API. Meshery comes with um, a command line interface, um, as well as a user interface, the, what um, Navendi was just um, showing you. Um, part of the, uh, those APIs have been used to build out two different GitHub actions. So to the extent that you, that you want to pipeline um, performance management into your CI systems, uh, to the extent that that's on GitHub, you can do that relatively easily with um, GitHub Actions. But um, the two that are there, one is for performance management. The other one is for SMI conformance, service mesh interface conformance. We'll talk about, we'll explain that in a minute. But, uh, but before that, what we'll talk about is uh, configuration management that Meshery does. I had noted that Meshery will um, analyze your runtime environment uh, for certain service meshes and tell you, uh, you know, if, if you're doing things right or, or, or not. And so if you see a lot of green, then you're doing things right. If you see some red, um, it might suggest uh, what, you should, what you should potentially look at changing. Uh, so service mesh or SMI conformance, that GitHub action that we were just talking about, you can run SMI conformance as a GitHub action that will run Meshery in your, in, well, as a, in your GitHub workflow, or you can just run SMI conformance separately. And, and so what is SMI conformance? That it's um, the notion that I was saying earlier that Meshery has been um, a partner to service mesh interface um, since its inception uh, and to help uh, you know, and so SMI has had uh, enjoyed some amount of adoption from, I think it is it um, seven or eight different service meshes, um, a, a number of them. And so Meshery will um, verify, will validate um, each implementation, um, each SMI implementation done by those various service meshes. Um, it then uh, publishes a public dashboard of the status. Um, of, uh, of conformance. Uh, we mentioned also that Meshery um, in this, in the current release that it has, it has a na the nascent ability to um, manage WebAssembly filters um, specifically for Envoy-based data planes. So most notably initially for Istio and in Meshery's next release and its v0.6 release, um, that'll be um, a generic capability for any Envoy-based data plane that, um, that's running an Envoy that supports uh, dynamically loading and unloading um, WebAssembly filters. So 
uh, there's a weekly meeting that happens in the Meshery project uh, that focuses just on WebAssembly filters, not only um, creating some filters, because um, the community has published some of those, but also on um, additional um, management capabilities that Meshery should have in context of, of these filters. Good. And so um, maybe we can take a look at what some of that looks like in Meshery. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, Lee. So uh, one of the things that we discussed is validating your running service mesh to see if it follows the best practices and all. So uh, this is the Istio adapter. So Istio adapter offers a lot of capabilities uh, like uh, provisioning service meshes, uh, provisioning uh, sample applications. Uh, so Meshery actually uh, supports uh, uh, supports your own applications which you can bring in uh, uh, bring in with you. So other than the sample applications, but the sample applications are here to uh, help you test out your service mesh configuration. And it also offers uh, other uh, Istio specific uh, configurations as well. And uh, one of the things we talked about was validating your configuration. So uh, if we try to analyze the running configuration, uh, it actually vets your uh, running service mesh configuration and uh, uh, helps you ensure that you are running uh, things in the best possible way. And uh, another thing that we talked about was SMI conformance. So, uh, Meshery integrates with uh, the SMI project to uh, to offer uh, uh, an analysis uh, to check whether their uh, service mesh is SMI uh, conformance uh, and validates it actually as well. So here you can see uh, Meshery being uh, test, used to test the SMI conformance of open service mesh and it shows uh, how much of the test that it actually passes. So, and uh, the reasons, the areas where these fails. And actually we also talked about a GitHub action. So some of the service mesh projects are already starting to adopt the SMI conformance GitHub action and using that in their CI CD pipelines to make sure that they, they the service mesh, they, they release uh, SMI conformant uh, uh, service meshes every time they make a release. And uh, we also talked about uh, filters. Uh, so Meshery also supports uh, Watson filters. So this is in a really early stage in this process. And uh, this will be uh, released publicly uh, in the next release of Meshery. And uh, we also looked into, uh, talked about bringing in your own applications so uh, uh, these are some sample applications. So me Meshery, what, what you can do is you can upload your applications directly into Meshery, uh, edit them in the Meshery UI itself and actually apply these applications uh, or onboard these applications onto your service mesh as well. Uh, we also talked a bit of uh, patterns, uh, but I'll... Uh, go back to Lee to explain a bit more about patterns before we dive in. Sure, yeah, yeah, this is a little bit of, so this is one of the areas that um, that the service mesh community has been discussing around, uh, within the CNCF service mesh working group, it's been discussing around, well, really like best, best practices of behaviors of a mesh, of how to take advantage of different features uh, and functionality of a mesh in a way in which, um, yeah, espouses best practices. So those are in the process of being codified. Um, there's about um, 60 that have been identified thus far. And as they are codified, this, this is sort of a, a, well, a sample, it's not sort of, it, it literally is a sample, um, simple set of YAML that describes a pattern, I guess in this case for an Istio service mesh with a few configurations. But uh, suffice to say that patterns, well, are hopefully somewhat concise. 
the, the same um, YAML, the same pattern is capable of describing a deployment of any of the 10 meshes that uh, Meshery supports, as well as you know, the, the, the configuration of the mesh, sure, but also things like um, uh, ongoing behavior. So if you wanted to run a canary, um, you can describe that in a pattern as well. You can describe, so patterns are or like a template. They're, they're customizable and ingestible into Meshery itself. And Meshery will take action based on what you've described in the pattern. Um, so I mentioned canaries, um, things like generating, uh, running a performance test, so generating load, and then um, doing statistical analysis on the, that set of results. Um, there's a few things that are, uh, that are coming, you know, if you want to deploy a WebAssembly filter, you can describe that in a pattern as well and, um, and have Meshery um, apply it. The patterns are service mesh agnostic and they're reusable and they are, um, the, the initial set of them is being stored in a, uh, a public facing repository. So I mentioned that the initial set, there's been like 60 that have been identified. And so there's, um, so there, there are folks that are, are working through what these look like. Um, Meshery ultimately will allow you to ingest these and um, not only uh, have them, not only will Meshery then orchestrate and apply them to your infrastructure, but you can also use Meshery to visually represent them and to visually um, design them. Um, part of this, so, so I mentioned that there's um, the CNCF Service Mesh Working Group is sort of hosting and, and stewarding and advancing these uh, patterns. They are also being um, written up into a book, Service Mesh Patterns from O'Reilly, uh, which is an early release. So there's you know, a couple of patterns that are in that early release now. Um, I encourage you to go check it out, or actually I encourage you to join the, the Service Mesh Working Group and um, dig in to some of those patterns as they're being defined. Um, on that, there is, well, early support for patterns in, in Meshery. Yes, Lee. So, uh, uh, so patterns, are, you can basically define patterns in your YAML files. So this uh, is an example of uh, the book info application. If you are familiar with Istio, you might have heard about book info application. It's the sample application that Istio sh ships with. Uh, so what you can do is uh, define uh, your configuration of your service mesh, as well as, as Lee mentioned, uh, the ongoing behavior of your service mesh as well. Uh, but uh, uh, like another capability of Meshery that is going to be released, uh, may, uh, released in the upcoming version is uh, visually configuring your service, service mesh. So, yeah, so this is a mesh map. So what you can see here actually is the uh, same book info application uh, rep represented visually. So you can configure your uh, service mesh configurations and uh, behaviors visually through uh, this uh, mesh map. And uh, you can also, uh, add uh, filters, uh, applications, uh, as well as make other configurations uh, visually here as well. And you can export it as uh, patterns to, to make it uh, reusable quite easily. And it also uh, automatically discovers. Uh, so uh, what you are seeing is uh, uh, the, that uh, messing that we discussed earlier, we, it automatically, uh, uh, figures out that we have deployed uh, a, a, the sample application and uh, it generates uh, a, a visual representation of that. Uh, yep, uh, back to you, Lee. Thanks. Uh, um, one thing that is probably is worth noting as well, like Navendu had said, is well, is the ability for um, for, for users for you to um, design. Uh, your service mesh, your service mesh configuration, the applications that run on it, and to do that um, uh, using any of the meshes that uh, Meshery supports. So that's um, that's nice. Hopefully, the effort that's being put into those patterns, um, people find helpful. Um, 
there's a number of users, there's a, a beta going on of MeshMap now and um, <clears throat> some fairly excited people. All right, so I, I think we're to, there's two, kind of two other projects to um, talk about. So one of those is the Service Mesh Performance Project that also entered into the CNCF. Uh, part of the goal of SMP, Service Mesh Performance, is to, well, answer an age-old question, age-old, like uh, from the dawn of Service Mesh, um, uh, the genesis of Service Mesh, and that is, what's the overhead of these things? Um, how do I know if I'm running them well? Um, how do I compare uh, against myself? How do I baseline my environment and um, track that over time? Uh, also, how do I compare against others? How do I contrast? And so the specification um, directly, well, you know, aim, aims to answer those questions that I just articulated. Um, the project is joined by maintainers from Intel, HashiCorp, Layer 5, and Red Hat. Um, and so uh, another place to come and get involved. So I, I encourage um, all of you to. Uh, there's a number of, uh, outside of just being a spec, there's a few other initiatives, some research that's going on with the university partners that you saw listed. So some interesting, um, interesting research actually um, just yesterday there was um, you, th th there's an IEEE um, publication that, that's coming out about some of that research. So, so keep your eyes peeled. Uh, on this, um, Navendu, this is probably good to show folks a bit about how Meshery implements. Meshery is the, the canonical implementation of SMP uh, and how it does performance management. Yeah, yes, clearly. So uh, Ashri has this capability where you can uh, define your performance test into profiles, as well as uh, uh, you can integrate with uh, Grafana and Prometheus to, uh, to see your dashboards and uh, see all the metrics uh, that are uh, valuable to you. And these metrics are uh, customizable. And uh, uh, Another cool feature is to is that you can actually uh, schedule your performance test uh, to run automatically. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so to run a performance test, uh, what we can do is. Oh, I think I think the I think our token expired. So we've been yeah. uh, uh, looking at it, looking at this for um, too long. On, um, if you take a look at the the, oh, okay, sure. So basically, uh, we have multiple load generators, uh, 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 Fortio, and we, recently we have been working on Nitox. So that is something that we will talk about soon. So these of us, uh, like we are looking into distributed uh, performance testing, distributed load generation as well. And uh, oh, so this is, uh, we can basically uh, run performance test on your service meshes, uh, even outside of your service meshes and you can provide URLs to test and uh, all the make configurations as well. Uh, so let me show you a performance test uh, running. Yeah, did, if we, if I wonder if you refresh and grab a new session, we'll probably. Yep. Come uh, so uh, basically, we've been looking at it quite a long time so that the token just expired. So. Uh, it should work fine now. Uh, so th these are multiple performance profiles. So uh, basically you can define your performance test in profiles. So if we take a look at it, uh, this is the sample performance profile and uh, you can also uh, run a test on with this performance profile. And uh, if you, Take a look at the results. Uh, 
so what you can see is the uh, some uh, some metrics uh, that uh, talks about your performance of service you can see your p99 uh, value and uh, all the other way other things uh, uh, you can also a powerful feature here is that you can compare uh, multiple uh, performance tests and see oh, which one is performing and which one is more suitable for you so you can basically have multiple configurations uh, of your mesh uh, deployed and uh, uh, basically compare your deployments uh, by running performance tests across each other. Uh, we also have a GitHub action that uh, runs these tests uh, on your uh, pipeline. So uh, you can test your, the performance of your mesh uh, directly from your pipelines uh, while uh, while you make releases or while you ship out a new project, a new new release as well. Yep, uh, back to you, Lee. Nice, uh, very good. So the service mesh performance, good. Um, the SMP as a project <clears throat> is, uh, well, there's a frequent question about what the difference is between service mesh performance specification and the SMI um, uh, service mesh interface specification. Uh, and this slide um, articulates a bit of a Venn diagram about um, their areas of focus um, and how they complement. They were um, Meshery and SMI and Meshery and SMP were designed in, to intentionally overlap and um, interact. Uh, and so hopefully uh, with all three in the CNCF now, they will, um, integrate even further than they already do. All right, lastly, um, if you're not familiar with uh, Nighthawk, there's a, there's a project called Get Nighthawk um, that it helps, uh, well, helps advance the existing integration of Nighthawk and Meshery. Nighthawk is a load generator um, uh, that is of the Envoy project. So it's, it's written in C++ and is, um, has a couple of intriguing capabilities that uh, are the ongoing um, study and ongoing um, effort within Get Nighthawk. And that is to, well, take advantage of uh, Nighthawk's um, adaptive load controllers, add a couple of those in um, and expose them through, through Meshery to let people recursively evaluate um, what are ultimately an optimal configuration in your environment. So an optimal configuration of a service mesh. Um, if you consider that uh, you've got a certain SLO or a certain um, you know, minimum latency uh, requirement that you need to stick to that, uh, but, you're, but you also want to, at the same time, maximize your, the resiliency characteristics of your deployment. Well, it can be a difficult thing to figure out, um, particularly if, any of your infrastructure changes. If you add another node to your environment, your clusters, uh, if you upgrade your service mesh, if you change the configuration of your service mesh, if you add another service uh, to your set of you know, workloads that you're running, um, those things change. And so the ability to um, run um, optimization routines and help you identify, um, well, optimal configuration of your mesh, but in accordance with your own um, constraints, is um, again the study of of uh, Get Nighthawk. Uh, Nighthawk itself also um, will also be or well is already orchestrated by Meshery, but will be further more so as Meshery goes to support distributed um, performance tests, which is to say to um, orchestrate the distribution of a, um, a number of instances of Nighthawk, generate load, um, get a much higher fidelity perspective for multiple vectors about. Um, the performance of your workloads, the performance of your infrastructure, and to be able to coalesce that, those performance characteristics and, and present it back to you. Um, that's, that's what this project is about, uh, um, Get Nighthawk. And so uh, there's kind of a mouthful in there. Uh, Meshery, again, is, is at a, a V0.5. So there's um, a fair bit more to the roadmap. A number of things that we haven't spoken about um, today, that's be the agenda of another CNCF webinar. Um, with that, uh, Navendu and I will encourage you all to try Meshery. Um, go, there's a, a, a warm and welcoming community of 
contributors, a little over 300, uh, as I was mentioning before, that have contributed to Meshery that are um, hungry for feedback. Um, they, they love hearing about their work. So uh, go try Meshery and jump into the service mesh community. Um, thanks for spending time with us. See you all later. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.